There is a lot of negative news flowing around the internet. And um, I don't know about you, but I have been getting inundated with messages about another pandemic coming, messages about the fires being uh, not natural wildfires, but being intentional fires, uh, the various things that are going on in the world. Um, you know, the, it's, you can call it conspiracy theory. Many of them are proven conspiracy fact at this point. But whatever it is, there's a lot of negative information. How do you stand for your rights as free people, as someone that is not controlled by the, the powers that be, and also not get so wrapped up in the negativity of what is going on in the world. This is the conundrum that I've been in, and I'd like to explore with you in this conversation today. I'm Washayla Sananda. Thank you for joining me. There are so many issues that we can really get wound up about. We, and, and especially here as Americans, we believe so strongly in our freedoms. We are willing to fight for them and stand for them. And we don't take that lightly. And I know it's not just in, in America, but of course, all around the world, freedom is such an important thing. Human sovereignty is our number one priority here. If we are controlled, then we really don't have free will as humanity. I would say that anything that we fight for, if it's a good cause, we're really fighting for the liberation of the people and of the planet. And this is a very important cause, and it shows up in so many different ways around our world. And so I was reading a friend's Facebook post yesterday, and the post was, I do not comply. And of course, she's alluding to new plans to have lockdowns, plans to have people mask again, and all of those things. Um, of course, it will be followed by um, you know what, more jabs inevitably, because that's the ultimate goal, I think. There was one post or one uh, reply on that post that really caught my attention and that I really appreciated. And and I do appreciate everyone standing up for your rights. So I, I absolutely align with that. What I'm looking at here today is how do we stand up for our rights and not get sucked in to the negativity that's going on? And how do we stand for what we want rather than perpetuating what we don't want simply by being angry about it? This one post or reply on this post said, uh, I'll paraphrase, but something to the effect of, I absolutely agree. And I believe in our freedoms. And I've been studying a lot of divine teachings. And the way that we use our words is meant to be the way that we create the world. And if you follow me, you know, this is my philosophy as well. We create our lives and our experiences with the words that we say, the actions that we do, and the way that we are being in the world. And so if we're constantly speaking about, oh no, this is coming, I saw that, how do we stay in the positive creation of our lives? How do we project the world that we desire, that we want to live in, that we see the new earth, the 5D? How do we project that world and that reality and be the people that are creating and stepping into that world as we're also experiencing the downfall of the old, the old way of doing things, and all of the negativity, the chaos, the upheaval, where is the balance in that? So my, my real conundrum here is how do we hold both? How do we hold both at the same time? How do we hold the knowing that the world is not operating on the up and up, that our governments are not operating for the highest good of the people, that there is all kinds of cover up and negativity happening on our world that we don't believe in and that we won't allow it to be what we stand for. And how do we simultaneously hold positivity, love, the vision for the future? 
because one requires standing up and really pushing back what is coming. And the other one requires a way of being that is, I am unbeatable. I am unbreakable. I am pure love and light, and this cannot affect me. However, we cannot just ignore these things that we do not want, because if we've seen already, if we ignore and do nothing, they can take over our world, right? So, and I'm not going to say that I have the answer to this. It's simply an exploration. How do we hold both? And I can take this into my relationship with really personal pain and trauma that happens in our lives. If you've had any kind of trauma, and if you're human, you most likely have. I don't know any humans aside from maybe small babies that haven't experienced trauma in their life. Um, even being born can be a trauma. So if you're human, you are inevitably holding some pain, whether it's from your past, from something going on in your life currently, from the state of the world, there is pain and a lot of bodies hold pain, but there is emotional pain, you know, it's, it's with us. And I think a big question mark for humanity, for each of us individually is how do you hold your pain? Because I see a lot of numbing and I'm not going to say I've never done this. You know, there is alcohol and drugs and big pharma is, is a huge perpetrator of numbing. Um, there are all kinds of diversions and addictions and escapism. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't entertain yourself. I mean, this, there are lots of things to enjoy in this world and I'm not condemning any of that, but looking deeper at Every action that I do, is this to numb or avoid something, or am I doing this out of joy and celebration? And a lot of the trauma covering, the, the push away that we do internally, we are trying to cover up something that we're not ready to have surface something that we don't want to see or feel, witness, acknowledge, and be with in our life experience so that we don't have to keep reliving it. The thing is, as we're suppressing it, we are reliving it just subconsciously, not consciously. So it is still affecting our lives as long as we haven't looked at it and dealt with it. And so I feel the same way about the quote unquote outer world, it's reflecting the inner world. So if you are deeply traumatized by things that you're seeing happening in the world, there is trauma clearing to do. And it's so important, not number one, not to avoid it, not to pretend you don't see it. This is not about pretending that these things aren't going on so that we don't have to deal with them. It's quite the opposite, acknowledging it. I see this. I feel it. I my heart is in, is aching because of it. I witness things that are going on in the world and it's hard to be with. And yet we get to be with them. And simultaneously, I think that seeing these things, the negativities of the world has a pathway, or opens up a doorway for us to envision for us to imagine, envision, and create what we do want to see rather than getting stuck in that old stuff. Anything that's going on in the world right now is a result of the past. It is not the future, it's the now. And the now was created by the past. My way of, of sort of sorting it out for myself is I do take in that information. I do look at things that are going on in the world that disturb me. I do allow myself to witness the things that I find disturbing, not overly, but I, I listen to that news um, as it comes from trusted sources. 
I look at the the things, the evidence and the things that are presented and consider for myself, you know, how do I feel about that? And then I stand for my rights and for my sovereignty and for my freedoms and for that of my family and for that of my fellow humans and animals. And simultaneously, I consider how would I like to see the world. And I create those visions. I spend time in meditation looking at this is the future that I see for myself and my world. And I spend time there creating that, feeling that, experiencing it as if it is so, and being the person that lives in that world. All of it is going on simultaneously. I get to stand for my rights and my freedoms while I envision a more free way of being, a more free world, a world where love prevails rather than fear. It's just like being able to be with your pain or someone else's, to sit with them and not have to fix it, but to be with it, to allow it. Okay, I witness your pain or I witness my pain. I feel it. I experience it. It is not going to consume me because when we give it our attention, and I don't mean the kind of attention that's like, oh my gosh, it's so difficult and horrible and crazy. Not that kind of attention. The kind of attention that is, I see it, I'm willing to be with it and acknowledge it and witness it. And I'm willing to share that burden with myself or with someone else. That alleviates because just the the saying, okay, it's not going to overwhelm me. It's not going to destroy me. I have the courage to be with it and feel it, whatever it is, that gives more courage to be with it, gives more courage to witness it and to stop numbing it, to stop avoiding it, to stop pushing it away, but to stand in it and rise above it, rise above it through it, allowing it to give us the lessons, the teachings that we need and to remember those lessons. These things have all happened before. These things that are happening in our world, it's not the first time. If we look at history and remember, oh yeah, these types of things have been done. The the information is all there. You can research it. It's not the first time that our reality has, there's been an attempt to take it over by nefarious or negative consciousness simultaneously there is an equal and greater attempt to bring love to this realm to immerse us in the vision of a loving beautiful peaceful world built on kindness and compassion and care for others and the earth herself and the animals we are stewards we are caretakers here And we must not allow anyone, just like we protect our children with our lives, we must not allow anyone to take over our realities. We must protect our vision of reality, our personal sovereign freedom and reality with our lives, because our lives do depend on it. The call to action here is to look at who you are being in all of these situations? Are you the one standing for love? Are you the one standing for the good of all rather than just the self, the the good of yourself? And what is it going to take to make the world a better place? Now, sometimes it just is going to come down to protecting your personal self and your family. And that's a beautiful thing. And that there's nothing wrong with that. And to just to look at how can I take care of myself and my family and my world? And just to keep visioning that. Who am I being when I am projecting love, when I care about others? And yes, I will stand for my freedoms. And yes, sometimes the voice that goes with that and the way of being that goes with that is fierce. 
and strong and powerful. And there's nothing wrong with that. We are fierce and strong and powerful. We are so powerful, so powerful, so much more powerful than any negativity that's out there. The power of love is stronger than anything. The power of love is the foundation of this reality and life itself. It is why we are here to realize that. And when I say realize, I don't just mean mentally. I mean, realize it, make it real in your life. And so let's explore. I invite you to explore in your life. Where can you realize more love? Where can you bring your presence, your truth, your voice, that which you believe in when it's needed? Will you use it to stand, to stand up and to stand for the life and the world and the reality that you choose to see and that we are stepping into as we move and ascend as humanity and this planet is stepping in to the 5D, the higher reality, the new earth. It is happening. We are going to rise up from the ashes like the phoenix, and we will find ourselves in this great new reality if we do choose love. Not everyone will, and that's okay. There are multiple realities going on simultaneously. The frequency that you're at, if it's a frequency of love, you will step in to the new earth in love. But the old earth is not going down without a fight. And I don't mean you have to physically harm or injure anyone or anything. I mean, that fight is internal inside of you. What do you stand for? Are you willing to stand for peace, for love, and use your voice, and use your energy, and use your mind, and use your body to stand for that in whatever way is the right way for you to project a new world of love as we do this together. I will end there today. Thank you for watching, for tuning in with me. I always want to be a voice for positive, for the new earth, for what we're creating without ignoring what's going on in the world. If you appreciate my content, please do like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you on the next video. I love you. I appreciate you. Namaste.